what makes a community fail. So what have you seen some major mistakes or challenges when it comes to community building and the Web3 space? You know, not doing what you said you do. So again, when you lose your word, you lose your people. In Web3, community is everything. Web3 and crypto projects live and die based on how loyal and vibrant their community members are when it comes to supporting the mission of their favorite Web3 projects. So the question becomes, how do companies or Web3 or crypto projects build a culture that is based on loyalty and inclusiveness where members feel valued, believe in the project's mission statement, and become raving fans of the project, which are the driving factors to the insurmountable growth for these Web3 projects who get it. Well, today we have the master of community building with us to tell us how to do this. He is recognized or globally recognized as the maestro of community building, and he is currently the VP of culture at Superfine. Before we start, I'm your host, Felix Kao, and I'd like to welcome Squiddy to the Web3 Mission Possible podcast. Great to have you here today, Squiddy. How are you doing today? Felix, it's an absolute pleasure to be here, man. Uh, really appreciate the invite. Happy to spend some time and chat, talking community, Web3, and anything else that you've got on the docket, man. Uh, I'm ready. I'm That's ready awesome. Go. That's awesome. So let's actually first start off because you had lived in um, the U.S. and now you moved to Vietnam. So what would you say is the biggest cultural change that you've experienced now that you've lived in Vietnam for those last two and a half weeks compared to the U.S.? Yeah, I, I could say Web3 brought me to Vietnam, man. It had me move across the world. Um, just everything, man. It's just it's so different. People are a lot nicer out here. The <laughs> food's better. The food's better. Um, you know, a lot Overall, of the people, the, the lifestyle oh, yeah, is they, different. Two, two completely different worlds from Miami to to uh, Vietnam here. But uh, absolutely loving it so far. Finally got... Kick, kick the jet lag after being here for a couple of weeks now, mm -hmm. uh, starting to settle in. And, uh, you know, it's all been part of the Web3 journey and that I wouldn't have it any other way. I love that. Well, I love that whole idea that, uh, first of all, you're settling into uh, Vietnam, but uh, how you just mentioned that Web3 provide the opportunity to come across the globe to a totally different uh, area. And um, because of that, um, you know, uh, the, the the opportunity there is absolutely vibrant in Asia right now. So, um, you know, since we're on the topic of culture, let's shift our attention to how creating a strong culture of inclusiveness consisting of valued community members is absolutely crucial to the success of Web3 and crypto projects. So first of all, let's start off with this uh, question here, Squiddy. So why is community building important in the Web3 space? Because without a community, there's just there's no project. You could build the greatest thing ever, but mm -hmm. if you don't have people using your product and you don't have people excited about it and you don't have people kind of contributing it and bringing their own value and bringing their own network, bringing their own community, you're just not going to succeed in, in Web3. Um, it's really about the power of the people and giving the people that power to build and grow that specific brand and that specific project that you started. So uh, it's of the utmost importance. You know, your community members, it's like they're little seeds. You need to water them and take care of them and make sure there's a mutually beneficial relationship between project and community, empowering the community to help take your project to, to new heights. Perfect. I love that. So let's actually dive into that. So as you mentioned, there's a two-way relationship between the Web3 projects and the all the community members in order to create an ecosystem that uh, really facilitates growth and uh, a mutual beneficial relationship for everybody involved. And so... In terms of um, the community itself, so for the, the listeners who are unfamiliar with, you know, the whole concept of community, so could you paint us a picture of what a community means and, you know, what it looks like in the Web3 space, for example? Oh, man, that's a load of questions, Felix. That's a load of questions. And we only ask loaded questions things, here, Squiddy. <laughs> one of the beautiful things about loaded question is, again, it's, it's fully open to interpretation, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone in every aspect of their life, some sort of a community, whether it's your community at your work, at your nine to five office job, whether it's a community for your favorite hobby, whether you play a sport, you know, any of your interests, right? There are communities yeah. that are being formed around those interests, which make the interests more fun. Things are more fun, more interesting when you're doing it with other like-minded individuals. So I would say community is a group of like-minded individuals who share similar passion or interests to, to make it to make it pretty simple. 
Perfect. Yeah. So it's pretty much just amalgamating yourself or aligning yourself with people of similar overlapping interests and uh, values, right? So here, if you you're you most likely amount, you're most yeah, ahead, you're squiddy. more likely to have these. Uh, you're more likely to have these connections when you know you've got a, a, a common interest, a common denominator. Okay, so let's uh, let's do now another. Let's peel back the layer on, on, on that a little bit. So I know that you're the host of uh, the Ape Show and also part of the Yuga Labs Gaming uh, Council. So you know you have really strong ties to the Board Apes uh, project and the team. So um, you know what would you say if you could name maybe you know top two or three things off the top of your mind that uh, Board Apes what they do really well, really really well that um, you know makes their uh, you know their, their community uh, so magnetic and powerful um, that they have all these uh, loyal community members. Like what do you what is it that you could say that they do extremely extremely well compared to all the other different uh, wealthy projects out there that make them really stand out. Yeah, first off, I'm shocked because I wear my board ape hat every single day. And the, we're the looking day I for get it. Onto a camera, <laughs> the ones the day that I get onto a camera and do a podcast, I, I decide to switch it up. I completely got it all. I completely got that mixed up. So and so that's uh, that's all me there. I've got so much board ape stuff, and it's a community that I'm really happy to be a part of. I've been part mm-hmm. of it for um, almost almost three years. Wow, now. getting getting close. To, um, you know, got dating back to May June of uh, 2021. Um, besides the fact, you know, it was one of the early crypto NFT communities and just people who were getting really excited, you know, the crypto punks had existed for a long time and, mm-hmm. uh, kind of like a, a new age of these NFT projects. They really set the standard of what it meant to, uh, get the community excited. Being first definitely helped being like one of like the, the, the big projects They really did it right. They released a new 10 K project, um, they had the Discord popping off. They had everything kind of going about, and they were able to display an identity. You know, people were talking about aping into NFTs and aping right. into projects. So being bored and ape, people could relate to that too. They had the characteristics that people could choose. You know, I, when I was looking at mine, I got one that just perfectly emulated me, who I am. Just you know, eyes closed, smoking whatever whatever your, your interpretation of that, that smoking yep. is. A black black t shirt, you know, I suppose I think some techno music or something. That's some good some good funky beats. Uh so, okay, this is a um uh, art imitates life, right? So this is something that I can kind of relate to and mm-hmm. get down with. And people who are just excited about these emerging technologies and what they could offer. Um so and this is before, you know, before that they were you know any additional financial aspect obviously the nfts are part of like the, the crypto community mm-hmm. but it was um you know really exciting thing to be a part of and the ways that it empowered community by giving full ip rights to their community members so uh, i had this board ape i could do whatever i wanted with this board ape i could start a brand i could do xyz and contribute and be part of the ecosystem I didn't need the, you know, I didn't need the support of the Board API Club directly. I didn't need one person saying I can't, can't do something. Once I had this asset, I was able to do with it as I chose. But to see so many people at one time have these NFTs, be part of the community, and use that to to start and energize their own passions to contribute to the ecosystem was just an amazing lightning in a bottle and something that was uh, was really cool. As soon as you got into the Board API Club, you were automatically in a club a digital club, a social club with people who shared those similar interests, right? And being so early in the space, things are going crazy at the time. Um, just another way to connect and relate to people. It automatically had that that bond that you could reach out to and, and, and support and be a part of. And it was just, it, it was really cool, man. So that, that empowerment of letting people be creative with their brands and support mm-hmm. that was, I think, one of the biggest driving factors. Perfect. Yeah, because you touched on a, a very important point because a lot of people have a misunderstanding of the practicality or utility of, let's say, of an NFT, for example. And you had just highlighted some very important, um, you know, points there. And and one of them was that it allowed you know people to have their own identity by having uh, you know the, the the NFT, for example, represent themselves, as you had mentioned in in your particular case, and also when you um, combine that with the digital ownership. And now you know you didn't need permission from uh, Board Apes to do what you wanted it to do with it and you could create your your own brand with it and then on top of that it allowed um, you know, all people with uh, similar interests to come together 
and, and really share their 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 passions and, and and brand new ideas when it came to you know concepts of identity inclusiveness and and what they could do uh, with their uh, you know being associated with the, the board apes as well. So I think that's very important that you had to highlight that because a lot of people um, that uh, are not fully aware of the importance of NFTs they just see it as a as a overpriced JPEG, right? So we want to make sure to dispel a lot of that um, a, a lot of that myth that uh, hey this is a, a lot more to that and you had this gone into not only the intrinsic value because that's the, the the major thing that keeps people coming back is they feel good about it because it's something that they can relate to but also there is as you mentioned it is part of the crypto uh, side of things and there is a financial side or which uh, which is an external or extrinsic value so here you know you you work with board apes that are able to create the dichotomy or the combination of both intrinsic value and as extrinsic value which is something that makes um, you know any company extremely extremely powerful no absolutely man hit, hit the nail on the head all right squiddy so got a you know a very important question for you right here so you know how did you get involved in community uh, community building in the web3 space yeah, man, um, so I've been a community builder my entire life and it wasn't until web3 I was able to see like okay this is something that I can not only do professionally, but something I could excel at professionally. Um, you know, again, I've been creating and cultivating communities around my passions, which are music, mm -hmm. games, and sports. Whether it's being at the, uh, you know, the day one of, you know, game modes such as FIFA, Madden, Ultimate Team, where there wasn't even, like, they just created the game mode. It was very beginning stages, and there wasn't even a trade function in the game at the early time. So if wow. you want to do a trade, like say you and I wanted to, I had a, a, a 99 messy card, right? Mm -hmm. that, uh, the market value, the fair market value was a lot more than the 999,999 coins. Cause again, you couldn't even do sell it for a million coins at the time. Say so the fair market value was like 15 million coins. Wow. Um, you and I, we had to like, we had to go on and, you know, get onto our headphones and get on server at the same time. It's like, all right, I'm going to hit the button. I'm going to hit post on go. We have to count down three, two, one, go. And I would have to filter set up. All um, manual. Perfectly. There were people who would be like, just literally just sniping all day, just sitting in there, sitting on the game, sniping like the highest parts. Mm -hmm. um, and then once a deal would happen, you know, whoever had the highest rep, you know, you could have been all, anywhere in the world. And I would, you know, I would go to the message boards. I would be like, okay, Felix, bought my my messy card um you know he sent me seven million coins first i posted the messy he got the messy and then he, he was a good enough man to send me the rest of the the seven million coins uh, i would trade with felix again and then you would build that social reputation that trust uh, on the message boards and you yep. get more you get more vouchers and that would let you do more trades and again when you be able to get more trades uh, it would allow you to go second on these deals because it was very easy to scam someone, right? Like, oh, okay, 50 million card, you know, do the thing, and then say, okay, peace, thanks for the thanks for the outfit. Mm -hmm. And there was just no track, and there was no way to kind of figure it out. So that was the first time really, like, getting involved in these early stage games um, with these digital assets, again, which you didn't even really own. Uh, and then even just creating a Facebook group and when I was in ninth grade called Every Person on Facebook that graduates in 2010 which was very self-explanatory. And you, you grew to what, one. like 100,000 people? Or it, it was quite substantial yeah, right, in terms of the number of uh, yeah, I, members. I, I grew that group to about like, you know, next thing you know, there's 100,000 people in it. Mm -hmm. It's just everyone in the world who who was on Facebook, Facebook was free to do time <laughs> groups, you know, at the time, who, um, yeah, who just like, they graduated that year. So instead of like doing my homework after school, I would come home and just talking to people all over the world on these like fast-paced groups. Um, which is uh, which is really fun and exciting um, to you know playing Pokemon Go right and just being the first one to organize mm -hmm. these in real life tournaments um, to you know throwing events in, in music right like whether it's you know they weren't playing the music that I liked in college so we would get together we would start having these little parties and functions and five people would show up and then next time ten people would show up and then next time we would have to move from one apartment to another to get more space, just kind of like growing things organically because of passions that I like. And then when Web3 came about, you know, I found NBA Top Shot. I'm a huge basketball fan. And, you know, I was able to go back to my experience building this Facebook group to over 100,000 people. I was able to go back to the ultimate team mm -hmm. aspect because at the time, Top Shot was promising a mobile game. 
Um, and this, what year was this? Like 20, 2016, 2017? Was that uh, for Top what? Shot? Yeah, for Top Shop. What year was that? So people understand the timeline of how you know you moved and got end, to Web three. End of twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. End of twenty twenty. Yeah. Um, and so being able to like see these things, I'm like, okay, you know, I've been able to do this for a while. I, I could do this for good, but like, all right, this is this could be like either a dream job or a great stepping stone. So I just got involved mm-hmm. in the community with NBA Top Shot, brought value, asked for nothing in return, but like in the back of my head, I'm like, guy, right, if they if I get hired by Dapper Labs, if I can work on this product, uh, it's either going to be a dream job or a great stepping stone for a career continuing to, to push forward and being a community builder and being that middle person between, you know, the, the CEO and the, you know, the, the key. You'll be dealing and, with the core executive team. And, the, and yeah. the people in the streets, right? Being able to mm-hmm. speak uh, all, all these languages. So uh, I was lucky enough to continue to bring value. Uh, and then just through just through that, they made me uh, a community manager. So I was one of the first like big community managers, and you know, for one of the biggest Web three projects that existed. One that was really like critical when it came to building, you know, bringing NFTs to the mainstream. Um, and that led me to you know getting reached out by Jam City, which was a you know a premier mobile gaming studio. They were mm-hmm. building a, a Web three game. I was like, oh, this is awesome. It was a dream I didn't even know I had, being able to work for a game studio, doing what I love and know best, which is just building and cultivating community around just a, a sweet game. Um, so, so that so really with... kick-started my, my entire journey. And once I, um, once I joined yeah, at Top Shot 2, and I, I had to stop buying Top Shot moments, I found the Board Ape Yacht Club, too. So that was kind of like, it took me a little bit to get to get involved there. I'm, I'm not first to anything, right? But like I kind of you know, saw where that was going, where it was going from the community side. Um, so I joined the, that community and it just really opened up a lot of opportunities. So I went from being, you know, being a community member there mm-hmm. to community manager to, you know, kind of being one of like the key team members for a mega game studio and facilitating and all of so that game really helped pave the way of what it meant to run and foster community for a triple A AAA game. That was something that I'm, I'm incredibly proud of. I love that. So it was it's all a matter of you coming in there and providing tremendous value at the very beginning. And it started off, as you mentioned, with Top Shop, and then with uh, with Apper Labs, and then with uh, moving on to like Jam City, for example. And also, you served as the community maestro for was it Ply Ply Labs? Was it as well? Yeah. So I, yeah. Yep. So Ply Labs was a mm-hmm. spinoff from Jam City. It was basically like the Web okay. three spinoff. Um, so I was a, I was a key core team member there, helped facilitate that, which was uh, which is really cool. You know, being able to fit into these investor meetings. Uh, you know, we raised. They raised at the time like like thirty million, you know, eleven million, wow. sixteen G, and I'm sitting in there talking. And about you're the seeing all the inside, how everything's done. Yeah, it was, yeah. It, it was it was really cool, man. Uh, it was very exciting. Perfect, and that obviously so, uh, took you through the board apes opportunity and what you're at right now with Superfine, right? Where you're serving as the VP of Culture for Superfine. Yeah, and that's how I met Calder through the board apes. So I joined the board apes in 2021, which was before. Um, Jam City, but being in the Board Ape Yacht Club mm-hmm. definitely helped my, my resume. But then once I was in these interviews, you know, talking about my experience, the kind of things that I showed you about my things that I had done, um, helped me help me knock that one out of the park. It was a very extensive interview process to join Jam City. Um, that is awesome. Yeah, so that just opened up a plenty of opportunities. And as you mentioned, it stems back from your early days being in grade nine and just getting familiar with, let's yep. say, Facebook and building, you know, a community that was 100,000 members strong. And then um, you know, taking all that experience and then parlaying it into um, you know all the ex- all the all the great communities that you're able to build, um, starting with Top Shop, Dapper Labs, all the way through to now being a huge contributor to the uh, Board Apes ecosystem. Absolutely, man. Uh, and all came from just a passion of wanting to bring people together, get to know people, and just bring together people who share common interests. That is perfect. So let's say that, you know, what platforms would be ideal for building. Uh, a community on and why so if you could pick let's say you could just name as many platforms or, or what you like have seen or when you are build helping um you know projects build um, their community out like which um, which platforms should they focus on and why well for, for me my favorite is always going to be real life man do it mm-hmm. out in person find ways bring events bring people together because there's no 
replacing the face-to-face communication, those real chats. That's how you totally really agree. form bonds and, and connections. But, you know, you're going to have community members and people with these interests all over the world. So, again, mm-hmm. really any platform that people are kind of native to. You know, Discord has been around for a long time. You know, the Web3 is, is thriving on, on X yep. slash Twitter for better, for better, for worse. But really, wherever your audience is and whatever platform that mm-hmm. you like to use, whatever social media site you like to, to do or something interesting, you'll be able to build and form a community on that. It's a, it's a classic case of if you build it, they will come. Um, so um, as long you know, as long as you know the, the platforms on like you know one of one of the big ones, you're able to kind of do so. Find other people on that particular platform. It's obviously a little riskier to do things on these newer maybe new platforms, but if you're someone who already has like a big audience, if you're a big creator or something like that, mm-hmm. probably get away with that. But, uh, you know, anything that the people are on, anything that you're happy and used to, if you're building the community, I don't think it really makes much of a difference on which particular platform uh, you're building on. There's so many great options. To be you're just meeting the users where they are, right? So, it, you know, if they yeah. happen to be on, let's say, on X, then you go on X. If they happen to be on Discord, you, you find them on Discord. And uh, or Telegram, Reddit, whatever the ca- the case may be, but just knowing once again what your ideal customer avatar is, and then being able to you know structure it so that you do meet them on those platforms. And of course, as you mentioned, nothing beats people in real life. So the real life interaction, um, you know, that's something even with all the digital age and all the uh, different types of digital communications we have, we're still at the end of the day, we're still humans, and and we still. Are we're still craving that uh, one-to-one or meeting in in person, right? So nothing beats that because um, you know you can pick up all the verbal and nonverbal uh, communication, and that's something that uh, cannot be replicated through the uh, digital means of uh, communication. So um, so with that, let's say let's say right now, Robert, you met a brand new project. So they they come to you and say, you know what, we, we you know we know that Squiddy, you're the best at this. How now? How do we create? an engaging and passionate and cohesive community from the very beginning. So Squiddy, how would you explain that? And we could break it into three stages. So the first one is, for example, attracting users. The second one is managing the community. And the third one is nurturing the community. So if we touch on the first stage, which is attracting users to the community, what would your approach be to that? Would you be able to touch on that, Squiddy? You know, first and foremost, you got to have something to attract with, right? Whether right. it's a game or whether there's like a value add or something, you can't just say, okay, let's just pull something out of thin air and just mm-hmm. start bringing people to it and build, you know, a house of cards. That just doesn't work. So you need to right. actually have a product. You need to have a game, something that's going to be of interest. Um, find like-minded individuals who are doing things, you know, if it's a game, find fans of traditional Web2 games or find fans of other people who are kind of like, like something similar. Um and then, you know, I wouldn't recommend starting anything unless you already have some sort of network where you can get that initial group of people, whether it's close friends, allies, um, other people, people who have been in, you know, d- different types of communities that you've already been in in the Web3 space, right? So um, finding that right core, you know, they always talk about finding your first thousand fans. Right. Uh, and then the, then the next million will come. So um, just making sure with those people too, and you're able to build real personal relationships, uh, not just like, okay, here, come on in and like, I'm, I'm the founder, you're the community member. No, it's really just like establishing the connection and uh, the channels of communication to uh, be like, hey, you know, this is this is my idea, this is our project, this is our thing, but like, we want to build and grow this t- together. So uh, offering what the values are, what the what the value add is for the mm-hmm. community member, which would encourage them to build and grow something uh, on top of it, and that's part of the, that community member, and just finding out what they want, right? You yeah. know, having that that small core, um, you know, you're going to rely on them bringing in their people to mm-hmm. utilizing the network effect. But it's like, okay, what's the value add? Why is this worth people's time? Which is people's really that's people's most valuable asset. Um, so that's kind of how I, I would start that there. So you got to have something good. Uh, you got to have some trusted initial community members here. And then, um, you know, it's got to be something that people are passionate about, something that people really like, and something that they think is going to enhance their day-to-day lives and make their lives better, make their lives more fun, bring some sort of value to them. I love that. So let's say that the, the, the project you're working with in the Web3, they have an awesome product that, or product or service. They also are, you know, it provides tremendous value. You got your first, let's say, 1,000, uh, you know, strong, raving uh, fans. 
Now let's bring into, because right now you're working with Superfine. So I think this is a really good place to bring in Superfine because um, Superfine is a revol revolutionary user acquisition platform. So if you're a Web3 company initially in the initial stages, let's say, that's looking to, let's say, attract new users in there, could you explain now how Superfine would come in and help a company uh, be able to achieve that? Absolutely. So again, we've got an amazing platform. Shout out to Carl, who's the CEO and, and mm -hmm. co-founder of Superfine. Um, you know, he's got an amazing experience running user acquisition campaigns for some of the most well-known mobile games of all time, such as 2048. Um, it, Superfine, especially at that at that early stage, you know, you got to have a marketing budget. Like, do I want to get this out and about? Do I want to use traditional ad networks? Okay, I believe in my product. I'm ready mm -hmm. to bring people in. That's where Superfine will come in and say, okay, we've got this finished product. Come on in, check out the game by doing traditional UA campaigns, which is, you know, getting these ads on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook, um, doing, you know, those ads you see in, when you're playing other games. All right, this game is something that I think that we would like to kind of push and, and get out. So that's definitely a way. And again, Superfine is built to bring people on a math level. So, um, you know, whether it's pushing a game, getting a game to number one on the the app store, yep. for example, um, that's one of the things where Superfine comes in. So Superfine's more for, especially right now, for more mature products and games, less when it comes to just new okay. startups. Because again, you don't want you don't want to kind of go too hard, too fast. Mm -hmm. So you have some some sort of established base first, and then that's when you know Superfine bringing on, uh, you know, Superfine would be the most optimal for that uh, particular. Yeah. Uh, company, whether and it could be Web three or mobile or any type of uh, company, right? Because you specialize in user acquisition. So as you mentioned, Absolutely. utilize anyone who's uh, running ads. Spitty? Anyone who's yep. running ads. Anyone who's running ads. Uh, if you want to run ads and you want to like kind of get people out in a traditional way, then Superfine you'll be able to to use and, and do so here. Um, you know, it's great to get new users to play and check it out, but again, they're coming in from from ad networks, so mm -hmm. they're coming in. You know, not with that you know, really warm on board, right? That's why it's going to be incredibly important. So when they come in, they check out your game, they check out your product, and then get involved in the community. You've got those community all-stars, those community MVPs who have been right. there since the beginning who can help guide them and take them to the next step and get them more involved and help with retention, et cetera. Perfect there. Yeah, so it's important to have that initial or that foundation of community members so that when you bring them in, they're not coming into an empty space and this kind of bouncing, right? So here, um, right. you know, so for people who are looking to, uh, you know, really bump up there and increase their user acquisition, make sure to get a hold of Squiddy or, uh, you know, uh, Calderon and, um, you know, they'll be able to uh, to help you reach that, uh, the new level of user acquisition. But I'm excited about your project. So we're going to have, uh, you know, Christian Calderon on, on the podcast as well. So he'll be able to share more onto it. But I'm glad that you're able to uh, speak on it, Squiddy. And um, you yeah. go. Oh, he's, he's awesome. Dope, he's, he's awesome. I met we, you know, we were able to meet in uh, Las Vegas uh, last month, and he's just uh, a tremendous person. And in terms of, um, so when you're looking to attract users right now, would you Web three is uh, more uh, male do uh, dominated? You know, we're looking at probably thirty five and under. Are we still looking at that as the initial approach to, let's say, bring on users, whether they're the first thousand users or whether you're targeting on those different ad networks? Um, let's say through TikTok and and so forth uh, through Superfine. Are you still targeting that uh, specific demographic, or have you noticed that as Web three has matured, it's kind of expanded outside of that um, out of outside of that realm? Like, what what are you seeing in terms of demographics being attracted to Web three projects? That really depends on the project. Now I'm saying pro. Now I got the I got the. The Canada vibe got on there. Got the <laughs> it's contagious. <laughs> it, it, it is contagious. Eh? You know, it's, uh, that really that really depends on the project. Mm -hmm. Depends on the way you're trying to do it. It's going to be different for every single one. You know, there could be a Web three. Um, you know, I, I don't want to say I don't want to be too stereotypical and say like a Web three Barbie, but like uh, you know, uh, that doesn't really make sense, but. Um, you know, it depends. Let's say on the fashion. Key. Is it that, that fashion? Yeah, that kind yeah, of sounds fashion. like what you're you're touching on. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Or just something like again, I also don't want to like stereotype anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, there's amazing when it comes to games too. There's amazing gamers. Obviously, uh, the mobile industry is actually the biggest demographic is is women yep. gamers mm -hmm. uh, on, on the phone too. Games like Candy Crush, etc. 
Right. So it really just depends. It depends on the game. It depends on what you're doing. You know, like we're doing a, if you've got a fantasy sports project, you know, you're probably going to go to the, the strong demographics of like, you know, male, certain age, you've been doing fantasy sports for, right. for a while, but it really just depends, man. Uh, the cool thing about Superfine is when things want to get taken to the next level, you're able to kind of like target what you're looking for, but that's just uh, the certain project's specific flavor and how they want to approach it. Perfect. Yeah, so, so, we, so uh, we cater to anyone. That's perfect. So it is a matter of the type of project it is, and then from there on, you'll figure out you know who to match the project with or to get those ads in front of the right people, right? So, um, exactly. so that's perfect there. So now if we move on to, we talked about now you know attracting users. Now, if we look at the second stage, so now let's say that you have the people in your community. It's a, it's quite a vibrant one, and now we're talking about managing the the community. So one of the you know one of the top priorities for um, a vibrant community is you know how do you keep the members excited and loyal? Well, it is airdrop season right now, mm-hmm. um, so people <laughs> airdrops you know, all over the place. <laughs> Tales all the time. People love free stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. always on, but not everybody can go that route, right? So mm-hmm. again, um, goes back to if you build it, they will come. If you got a fun game and it's keeping them entertained that they're getting value from playing your game, right. they'll keep playing your game, right? Mm-hmm. There are these games that have no Web3 aspect and people play it all the time. They spend hours, right? But they have a fun time and they like playing it. So if people are having fun, they're going to keep having fun because people like to have fun. It's just plain and simple as that. Um, if there's different ways for them to be able to grow, um, whether it's networking or going to different events or being able to unlock live events, people are going to be able to do so. So I think live events are a good one. Um, people, you know, partnerships is always a, is always a big one. Um, and just, you know, people are just going to gravitate to projects that align with their interests. And if it aligns with their interests and it's bringing value to their life, people are going to say, people are going to tell their friends, people are going to bring their, their people in there too. So, um, there's so many different ways to organize and cultivate community events. As you mentioned, it is airdrop season. Uh, a lot of crypto projects are doing rewards as well for um, you know rewarding participation, which could be redeemed later for real prizes or for future uh, uh, you know uh, token generation events, for example. And um, also, one of the things that you had mentioned that uh, is very critical to the uh, maturation of the Web three space, especially let's say in the gaming space, is creating a uh, a game where where users actually really want to play it. And, and it's not so much predicated on the financialization because we had seen that in the last cycle where, you know, we're, uh, a lot of um, a, lot, a lot of projects were able to bring in a lot of users, but the moment the market had changed, uh, you know, they, they lost 90% of their user base. So here uh, we're seeing a shift in terms of actually a lot more focus and concentrate, concentration on the user experience when it comes to, let's say, in the gaming industry, making, making games where people want to stick around and uh, and play it. So let's say that you have the opposite problem. Now let's say that um, you know at one point your community was just rocking. Everybody was just involved, talking. You know, like you're this the show of the town. And then what ends up happening is you start to see you know some of that shine uh, kind of wear off. So um, you know, as somebody who's in charge of uh, the community and, and making sure that it, it fosters and, and continues to grow, you know, what do you do when community members start to lose interest? And what are some ways that um, you know that 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 you could use to revive the community. Well, again, when community members start to lose interest, you're gonna have to kind of look inward, like, okay, what mm-hmm. are we doing? Why are people why are people losing interest? Kind of figure out uh, what's working with it, like the floor, what brought them in, and you know what's kind of keeping them. So that could be a lot of different things. Whether it's okay, there's not enough levels of the game. Mm-hmm. Whether it's just they're not getting the support that they feel from the from the community itself. Um, so again, there's a lot of different, a lot of different ways um, to, to maintain that. And if you just, if you stop providing value, and if you're not, it goes back to the initial answer, bringing value to the people's lives. And if you're not keeping that up, and you're no longer bringing value to these people's lives, whether it's for fun or networking or anything else, then you're gonna, you're gonna lose your community members too. If it's not part of their identity, then you're gonna lose them. And people have very short attention spans, and we are in the attention economy right, right now. It's less than three seconds. It used to be uh, less than the goldfish, which is like seven seconds. So uh, yeah. <laughs> we're certainly uh, being impacted in terms of the attention economy. So how does a company, as you mentioned, as if if uh, let's say as if a Web three project finds out the community members are losing interest, 
what are some of the ways that they could go about or some of the signals that would signify that? And then where would they, how would they go out and, and get feedback in terms of like what's really going on? Like, is it through, for example, AMAs or, you know, when people leave, let's say, tweets on X, like what are some of the ways where like uh, a company or Web3 company could kind of like always keep a pulse in terms of what their community members are feeling towards the value that they're providing? Yeah, AMAs are great. You always want to empower your community members. You know, you want to identify your community leaders, uh, mm -hmm. the ones who are outspoken or the ones who have the biggest following, right? You know, who might have the loudest voices. And make sure you're constantly getting feedback. Make sure you're talking to them and having these conversations one-on-one -on -one so these community members feel heard and that they're part of the process. Perfect. Yep. So once again, it, it ducktails into that uh, two-way relationship. And prior to social media, it was just a one-way street. You know, you would, the companies would just blast you with a bunch of messages. But here, with uh, with all the community building that uh, these uh, social networks uh, allow in order for companies to communicate, it's now they um, you know create uh, allow the uh, person or the users to have a voice as well. So it's very important for you know the projects to be in strong communication with their community so that they, they are continuing to provide the value that the community is is looking uh, looking to uh, to really capitalize on. And um, so if we move on to the last stage, which is the nurturing stage, so you, you attracted, you know, a, a really awesome uh, uh, group of users, for example, and community members, fantastic job of uh, managing. Now you're in the nurturing phase. So, you know, one of the things is you're focusing on two different aspects in terms of the intrinsic value which is more based on user experience and also the financial side. So how do you see those two coming together? Because Web3 offers a unique opportunity that a lot of different type of um, you know, technology opportunity does not offer. So how do you see that moving into the future where you know, it's uh, the combination of intrinsic versus intrinsic or, or, or does one way overshadow the other? Because right now it seems that initially the external value or which is like based on the financialization of the project would be like the number one priority. And then secondly would be user experience. Do you see that flip-flopping sometime in the near future or would they always be in the same kind of order of uh, priority for users moving forward? Yeah, keep giving opportunity to community members to grow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your most little people, they're doing it because they love what you're building and they want to be a part of it. So whether it's hiring from within to be a community manager, you know, just kind of like, aligning on, on that growth right like if you're growing on a specific scale make sure you're growing with the community at that specific scale as well right don't let people feel like they're tapped out or they're giving everything that they can to mm -hmm. a project and they feel like they're not getting that that value back to the people they're not getting the, the, the love and respect from the specific project because again you guys are growing together making sure that it's um you know corresponding well correlating well on the on the right scale uh, and it's like making sure that, okay, you know, following the ideas and that comes with uh, time, that comes with energy, that come, comes with, um, you know, can come financially as well. That making sure that the people who are putting in a lot of doing a thing are, are recognized and are growing with you as you scale on whatever level you're trying to scale at. Perfect. Yeah, so just being able to recognize your community members based on all those multiple points. So it could be, you know... Um, Extrin uh, extrinsic value or intrinsic value, but it's just recognizing what really uh, are their hot buttons, so to speak, right? That really keeps them motivated and excited. And a lot of that, once again, goes back to, um, you know, keeping the communications channels open between the uh, crypto projects and the Web3 projects and their community members. So in order for, let's say, a Web3 project to have, uh, to run a really successful community, what would you say has to be in place? Obviously, someone like yourself, Squiddy, who would uh, overlook the community part, but would you need ambassadors, for example? Like, how does that kind of look like um, in terms of, um, you know, the, the key components to how a healthy community uh, would look like? So in addition to this, your your community members, but as a company, which roles would you assign in that particular, um, you know, in, the, in that particular capacity? Yeah, ambassadors are, al ambassadors are always great. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it can come in many different it can come in many different shapes and sizes, right? Find, always find ways to reward your your top community members and incentivize them to maybe hit certain levels of the community. So whether it's you know using these third party applications to measure you know who's really most active on social and reward them in, in that regard, or just like recognizing the right people, whether it's selling them out, giving them the appreciation, giving them that social status in these communities. 
that social currency, which is always very important, right? You know, people are playing Pokemon and they're playing for a long time. They end up having this big collection too. Like All right. they, you know, they like to be recognized for that. They like to share that with their people too. And just having like that big collection adds to their social currency amongst others. Cause they're, okay, they have the, they have the assets to back it up. They have the account to back it up. Mm-hmm. Um, like their on-chain reputation. Exactly. Yeah. With it being on-chain reputation, you know, the back, people's bags speak for themselves. Which comes with too, and just being able to, being able to recognize that, being able to recognize that and grow with them, and whether it's just like if they want to come onto the team full time, you know, present opportunities, right? Mm-hmm. Find win-win situations that help you accomplish your goals and help the community member, the creator, or whatnot, accomplish their goals as well. Keep in mind, a lot of people just want to like, especially in games, they just want to play a game, have mm-hmm. fun, own their assets, maybe make a little money. Um, and that's kind of the extent of it. They like being part of the community, but they're not necessarily trying to just like make a career out of it. They're not trying to, you know, work in Web3 or whatever. They like being a community member and they just like being heard. They like playing games that are fun. Um, they like doing things that are fun for them that are enhancing their day to day. And that, and that's it, right? Yeah. But the like one that are really trying to find and utilize and use your community, use your project as a stepping stone for them. In a good way, right? Not not in a bad way, uh, because like okay, they're providing value to you, and they want to have that same similar value and at least opportunity to provide to them. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty much uh, being able to understand um, your community members and users on many different levels, as you highlighted, from the person who let's say loves their everyday job, but they don't uh, they don't have any interest in terms of pursuing a career, let's say in Web three, but they just want to enjoy the game, for example, and benefit. Um, a little bit on the financial side versus someone who is highly active in the community and they see that this is a huge part of their life uh, moving forward and uh, a company's success, uh, especially in the community building process, is uh, is highly predicated on that. So we talked about all the ways that the you know community building, all the ways that um, community building wins. But let's talk about the other side of it in terms of what makes a community fail. So what have you seen some major mistakes or challenges when it comes to community building and the Web3 space that, you know, that, People that people that companies should avoid uh, in general. So if you could name, you know, top three off the top of your head, like what would you say the biggest mistakes that you've seen when it came to community building in the Web three space? Lack of transparency is, right. is one. Mm-hmm. Um, number two would be, you know, not doing what you said you do. So again, when you lose your word, you lose your people. Right. And as soon as trust, as soon as trust is gone, it's really hard to it's really hard to regain. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, it's not delivering on what you say and set out you're going to deliver to, right? People don't like to be lied to. That goes that goes back to the to the trust thing as well. So um, these are things that, you know, you see every single every single day. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's, it's hard out there, man. It's hard to kind of keep the people's attention 24-7, which is what some have expected in this Web3 space. But just making sure that, okay, setting specific expectations and then following those expectations, kind of leading by example, and that should hopefully rub off from the, the community too. So over-promising, under-delivering is one of the worst things, one of the easiest ways that you can lose a community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so a lot of it, as you mentioned, is built on trust, transparency, and delivering on what it is that you say that you're going to do. And especially at a time like this, um, you know, I think a lot of people have been burnt in the space and being able to um, carry through with what it is that you can say and to and to, to build that strong sense of uh, trust and to share information in a way that's transparent is absolutely key to not only a project success, for example, but also as an industry, because the industry right now is still going through that transformation of where it um, wants to be seen in a much more public or positive light from the public point of view. So um, you highly highlighted some extremely uh, valuable um, insights that um, you know pretty much all companies, not just Web three companies, need to uh, need to accomplish. So let's hop on to our last questions here, uh, Squiddy. So you know, what are your twenty twenty four predictions for Web three, and how community building will change and evolve over the next one to two years? This is a 2024 Web3. You know, we've been fairly maturing as a space, and we've got these OG collections that are coming out. Mm-hmm. Now people are, you know, we're seeing a lot more of these creator communities, right? So creators, you know, it's not anything new, but I think we're going to see more creators and people with an audience really just nurture nurture people who like to follow them, whether it's for advice or whether it's for alpha or whether it's for mm-hmm. whatnot. Um Again, just people who have similar interests kind of getting together with, with common goals. 
So um, I think we're going to see less PFPs mm-hmm. kind of come about. Obviously, a lot less than we have the single tray tops. Um, I went back to my hidden folder, and the PFPs I have are just absolutely disgusting. So, <laughs> like I'm, I'm so ashamed of myself. Of, of how, oh, so, so what got you started? Got you what you started? Yeah, it got me started. Right. It's, uh, it's, it's part of the path, I guess. Yeah. Um, but oh my God, all the ways to be. Oh <laughs> I think um, we we all have our stories when it comes to that, but uh, that allowed oh us to my, oh kickstart the journey, as you mentioned. Because without it, exactly. then obviously how you're supposed to evolve and and move forward and progress from from there. So yeah. So as you mentioned, yeah. a lot of it is it seems like in terms of the creator economy is you're seeing a lot more KOLs, for example, and it's becoming a lot more organized and people are. Um, you know, seeing the KOLs as uh, as what they are, like key opinion leaders, and and learning yeah. off of them, and and we're seeing the whole space kind of mature in that uh, specific uh, capacity. So let's end with this question here, uh, Squiddy. So where can people go to connect with you and learn more about what you're working on? So I'm I'm hanging out in the streets of X, man. Squiddy NFT. Um, you know, we've got our heads down here with Superfine, and uh, I'm really grateful that mm-hmm. my you know I've, I've had a a fascinating journey of you know becoming the community maestro of Web3 game of Web3 is and just uh you know being involved and trying to bring value wherever I can. But that's led me to an awesome product and now it's just like really putting the head down, working. It's almost like a you know full cycle. Yeah, it's still a technical goal yeah, of Web3 mm-hmm. product. I do my thing. I connect with the people. I do my gaming ape show. I do our gaming ape show every Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern time, 9 p.m. Vietnamese time. Um, Perfect. Spent, just had an awesome guest this, this last week. And yeah, it's just kind of staying mobbing with my people while we keep our heads down with Superfine and trying to build a, uh, an amazing generational product and platform. And we think we've got something really special here. So uh, my my influence oaring has gone has gone down considerably. <laughs> so um, when, I, when I hang out with the peeps, it's really on X. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I might see some more content popping up soon, maybe documenting my travels again. Cause, and I live in Vietnam now. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And uh, so you have lost the show because not a lot of people are familiar with the lifestyle of Vietnam. So you definitely got to post yeah, more exactly. content on it. White, white boy in Vietnam. <laughs> I just got the hey, you got, you got some um, nice touch. You'll, you'll get a lot of views on that. <laughs> so it's, uh, it'll be, it'll be cool, man. So again, if I do anything like that, if I bring out additional platforms, it'll be, you know, you'll be able to find that on my, on my ex. I'm just, you know, and what's your handle on your dude, X, man. by the way? What's your handle on your Squiddy, on next? Squiddy? Squiddy NFT. Squiddy NFT, perfect. So yeah, we'll make sure to uh, to put your link in the description uh, below. So well, Squiddy, you know what? Um, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing your thoughts and expertise on why community building must be a top priority if Web3 and crypto projects want to succeed. So we look forward to bringing you back on the podcast to share more insights as the concept of community in the Web3 space continues to evolve. So make sure to follow Squiddy on all of his socials. We'll put all the links in the description below. And don't forget to smash the like button for this video if you found it helpful. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure to turn on that notification bell to see more Web3 experts like Squiddy on the podcast as we release new episodes moving forward. With that, we'll see you in the next one.